China is a vast country with rich natural resources. Its civilization is one of the earliest in the world. It has a documented history of more than 3,000 years and an undocumented historical background of more than 5,000 years. The country has a rich and splendid cultural heritage. China is famous for its silk, pottery and porcelain making, architecture and gardening, stone caves, stone engraving, traditional medicine, martial arts and ancient books and records. Agriculture is highly developed here. It is a major producer of wheat, corn, rice and cash crops. Its freshwater lakes are production bases for fish, shrimps and other aquatic products. The country has fairly rich plant and animal resources. But owing to its huge population, its per capita natural resources such as land, water and minerals are not so rich. China is a unified country with 56 nationalities. The Han people account for 92%, while the other 55 nationalities make up about 8%. The Chinese people are proud of inventing the compass, gunpowder, paper making and printing in ancient times. After the founding of the People's Republic of China, the government launched massive economic reconstruction program, centering on the development of modern industry with implementation of reforms and opening up policies from the late 1970s. China's doors were opened for foreign investments and the country focused its attention on rapid economic development. China soon developed an export-oriented economy. China's economy is one of the best economies in the world. Why I say that? Uh, because the GDP growth rate for this year, we can still have it over 9%. It's compared with uh, the GDP growth rates in the other countries. I think this is the highest one. Okay. And for the next year, the year 2009, we can keep our GDP growth rate around 8%. That is uh, near to the average annual growth rate of China's economy during past uh, 30 years. So. Uh, we are facing many difficulties due to the American financial crisis. But our party and our government already made a lot of efforts to keep the stable, rapid growth. I think the probability of our success is quite high. Industry plays a leading role in the national economy. The output of products such as steel, coal, crude oil, power generation, cement, chemical fibers and consumer electronics has given China the identity of a giant manufacturing power. Its progress in the field of transportation and telecommunication is also remarkable. Many new cities have emerged and public facilities have improved constantly during the last two decades. The major policy and the measurement is to enlarge domestic demand. We will take the so-called proactive fiscal policy and the monetary policy to enlarge the domestic uh, demands. Yeah. Beijing is China's political and cultural center. Located in the northern part of the country, in an area of 16,800 square kilometers with a population of more than 12.6 millions, Beijing has a history of 3,000 years. The city has witnessed the glory of the Jin, Yuan, Ming and Qing dynasties. It has a strong flavor of an oriental old capital. 
The Forbidden City is the symbol of the ancient Chinese civilization. This imperial palace was used by rulers of the Ming and Qing dynasties. The existing structures of this palace were mainly reconstructed by the Qing rulers who created the most powerful empire in China. From the 18th century till today, the Forbidden City remains the same and looks the same as it did then. It is one of the largest and grandest palatial complexes in the world. In 1987, it was included in the ranks of UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. It occupies a total of 720,000 square meters, includes buildings with some 8,700 rooms, and is surrounded by protective walls and watchtowers at the four corners. The imperial throne located in the Hall of Great Harmony is a precious work of gilded lacquer with dragons carved on it. The Taihe Hall has ochre-colored walls and golden eaves and is one of the palace's most magnificent structures. The palace's overhanging edges of the roof have figures of divine animals. It was believed that these figures drive away evil spirits. We found the figures of these strange animals in almost all old royal buildings in China. The Forbidden City is an expression of the union of heavenly will and the Chinese people. The architecture and the treasure displayed in this palace present a glimpse of the country's history, art and culture. The flag raising and lowering ceremony is also an interesting event to watch at Tiananmen Square. The Tiananmen Square Gate Tower is in front of the Forbidden City. In the center of the square stands the monument of the people's heroes and Mao Zedong Hall. Tiananmen Square is considered as the symbolic heart of China. It was from the Tiananmen Rostrum that Chairman Mao declared the founding of People's Republic of China on October 1st, 1949. Every day, tens of thousands of people visit this place. Yuji Mosque is one of the oldest and most famous places of worship for Muslims in Beijing. Situated in the southwestern section of Beijing city, it is the largest of the 80-odd mosques in Beijing. In an area of approximately 6,000 square meters, it reminds us more of a typical Chinese royal palace of worship. There are Arabic ayats inscribed on the wall and the dome on the roof. An unusual characteristic of this mosque is that some of the walls and roof hangings have the mysterious animal carvings. The architecture and interior of the Nuji Mosque is a blend of ancient Chinese palaces in style and the Arabic traditional mosque. This is unique. The mosque was first built some thousand years ago by an Arabic scholar, Nasruddin. North Stell Pavilion was built in 1496. The Grand Hall consists of Cave Hall, Meharab, and Attached Hall. The Meharab was constructed by the Liao dynasty and expanded by Ming and Qing dynasties covering a total of 760 square meters of area and 39 meters in length. The Copper Cauldron was built in 1702 and rebuilt in 1739. It is made from copper and tin alloy. It was used to prepare meat congee in the night of the 27th of the Islamic month of Ramadan and other ceremonies as Eid a Miladu Nabi. Within the premises of the mosque, there stands a hexagonal structure known as the Moon Watching Tower. Beijing's oldest Catholic church is called the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. It was built by Italian missionary Matteo Ricci in 1605. 
He came to China during the reign of Emperor Wan Li of the Ming Dynasty. The Qing Emperor Shunzi rebuilt the cathedral in 1657. After its damage by the earthquake, the church was reconstructed to its present form in 1904. During Easter and Christmas, it's always crowded. White Pagoda is a famous temple in Beijing. It was built during Kublai Khan's reign to honor Sakyamuni Buddha under supervision of a Nepalese architect, Aniko, in 1271. The Monastery of Greatness, Holiness, Longevity and Everlasting Peace and Tranquility was built with the White Pagoda at its center. The Hall of the Four Devarajas has grey barrel tiles. In the center of the hall is seated Maitriya Buddha. Behind this is the statue of Vir II. On the two sides are the four heavenly guardians. The temple is considered an aesthetic masterpiece. The miracle of ancient architecture, the Great Wall, is a symbol of Chinese civilization. It was built and rebuilt throughout the ages as a matter of pride and security for a series of dynasties. The Great Wall of China is the world's longest human-made structure. The history of the Great Wall is linked with almost all ancient and medieval dynasties in China. This unique military fortification was started in the 5th century BC. The Ming Dynasty continued to build the wall until the middle of the 17th century on a much larger scale and with longer lasting materials than ever before. Obviously the wall was not built as a single endeavour. It was constructed and reconstructed for more than 2,000 years in accordance with strategic requirements. Hi, I'm Risha Baswani, an Indian based in Hong Kong. I'm at the Great Wall, one of the wonders of the world, a, total, a totally awe-inspiring experience and an absolute must on the tourist map. It is full of rugged natural beauty and I absolutely um, encourage anyone who comes to China to definitely visit this place. Hi, I'm Akash. I'm an Indian studying in Australia. Just sitting here on the Great Wall is absolutely breathtaking. Just taking in all the historical value of it and the value of human exploitation and the inherent thing of insecurity that the whole wall was built just to keep others out, to preserve their own place. It's, it's just absolutely breathtaking being able to sit here, stand here, walk on it and absorb it all in. Hi, I'm Prakash. I'm also a student studying in Australia. Um, it's really exciting as a, as a young person to be in a place where you thought you'd never be as an Indian. Um, I've seen a lot of places around the world, but nothing quite captures the culture and just the vastness of this place as well as the wall does. And um, it's our first day here in Beijing and I'm so glad that we came here to start off. It's a really amazing place. The Badaling Great Wall is located at Yangqing County near Beijing. It is at 1,015 meters altitude. There are two gates here. The wall is grand and firm with a base of stone bars. The top floor has square bricks. The Badaling portion is made of bricks and stones from the hills. It is nearly 8.5 meters high and 5.7 meters wide. The process of climbing up the wall fills you with such emotions and life force that all hurdles diminish in your way. In 1987, it was included in UNESCO's World Heritage Sites. It is said that the Great Wall is visible to astronauts from the Earth's orbit under favorable conditions. Certainly, it is a must-visit site for tourists. It is indeed true to say that a person who has not climbed the Great Wall has not experienced China. 
The Great Wall is an integrated military fortification consisting of passes, smoke frusta and enemy watch towers. It represents the hard work and sacrifice of the people in the past. Although it has lost its military value for a long time, yet it reflects the dignity and wisdom of the Chinese people. The martial art Kung Fu is not only known for its self-protection and attacking the enemy, but it has become an integral part of Chinese culture and tradition. It is a strange experience to observe the presentation of Chinese tea using Kung Fu movements before the start of the Beijing Opera at the auditorium. The kettle has an unusually long spout. The tea is served in beautiful bowls with superb display of Kung Fu techniques. It is accompanied with sweet crackers, nuts, oranges and other selected fruit. This type of hospitality fills the guests elevated and is reflective of the wisdom of the Chinese people. Although there are many regional operas in China, the Peking Opera is reflective of the country's history, art and culture. Various art forms prevalent in China are well represented in this opera. It incorporates singing, dancing, acting, acrobatics, drama, makeup and splendid costumes. The classic roles, costume, face makeup, the orchestra and stage settings of the Peking Opera illustrate the myths and legends of the country. It is a national treasure. It covers all forms of traditional Chinese performing arts. It is a fusion of music, acting, acrobatics and costumes. <laughs> The plot also has a deep cultural connotation, with most stories coming from historical legends and folklore. In the Peking Opera, Sheng is the positive male character, Dan is the positive female role, Jing is the supporting male role with striking characters and Chu is the clown. Different schools have unique masks, costumes and ways of singing. The costumes and face paintings of the Peking Opera are very artistic. The Monkey King is a symbolic figure in this opera. The Jushan Primary School is situated in Hidea district in Beijing. Its principal is Mrs. Wang Shu Ching. There are 800 children and 56 teachers and other staff members in this school. Children mostly belong to the families of farmer workers who have come from 25 provinces and have settled here. In China, there is compulsory education till class 9. <laughs> All facilities of a good school are available in this village school. Besides mathematics, science, English and arts, different types of martial arts and performing arts are also taught here in accordance with the interest of the children.
To promote the personality of the children, training is given in music handicrafts and painting and colorful cultural activities are arranged in the school. Each classroom has a TV monitor, air conditioner and a projector. The principal keeps a penetrating eye upon each teacher and student. Though English is also one of the subjects, attention is focused on the Chinese language and calligraphy. They are proud of their own language. In this government-run school, the teaching and other staff members are employed on contract basis. There is a provision for residence for around 80 students in the school premises. Although it is called a village school, it has all the amenities of a model city school. During our trip to Beijing, we got the opportunity to visit the well-known Shi Cha Hai Sports School and to film various sport activities. The institute has a history of 50 years of excellent performance. Having the coaches of international stature and the latest sports facilities, Shi Cha Hai Sports School mainly trains in volleyball, boxing, taekwondo, wushu, table tennis and gymnastics. Vice Principal Ms. Feng Hua mentions with pride about her institute's achievements in the Beijing Olympics. The school helps in realizing the dreams of not only Chinese athletes but also accepts foreign students from all countries. The prestigious National Stadium Bird's Nest was constructed for the Beijing Olympics 2008. Located in the Olympic Green, the stadium is the world's largest steel structure. This stadium hosted the opening and closing ceremonies, athletic events and football final of the 2008 Summer Olympics. And this firework display from 287 points. On the top, a total of 20,000 fireworks will go off right now. The capital of the Shaanxi province of China, the city of Xi'an, served as the capital of the country for 13 powerful dynasties for over 1,100 years. In the ancient and medieval period, it flourished to its peak during Chu, Qing, Han, and Tang dynasties. Xi'an's name is spoken along with ancient cities of Athens, Rome, and Cairo. In this sense, it is a treasure house of human culture. In terms of scientific and educational development, Xi'an ranks third in China. Initiated in March 1991, Xi'an, high-tech industries development zone, has been developed in an area of 35 square kilometers. Key investment fields in this zone are electronics and IT software, communication and equipment manufacturing, electronic components and biomedicine. India and China enjoy friendly relationship. I hope Indian companies will develop close contacts with Xi'an Industrial Development Zone. We can develop and benefit each other. Located at the High Tech Industries Development Zone of Xi'an City, the Xi'an Hyatin Antenna Technologies is working in the mobile communication antenna field and has developed more than 400 specific antenna models. Having successfully stepped into the international markets, Zahat's products have entered India, Southeast Asia, Europe, America, Taiwan, Africa and other countries across the globe. 
Imported from France in 2003, the SG-128 system consists of the rotating platform, sampling probe array, probe array system software. The Stargate 128 system was from Setimo, France. We have made a lot of upgrading on this system. This system's main function is to test the radiation pattern of antennas. The sampling data is collected inside the anechoic chamber and then processed by the computer outside the chamber. This is a high speed 70 times faster than the 2D traditional near field test system. With certain upgradation, this multi-probe system can be utilized for high-end measurement projects like the smart antenna performance and the mobile phone radiation influence to human bodies. At a distance of 30 kilometers from the city of Xi'an, there exists the mausoleum of the Qin Emperor Ying Chan. He was a great visionary. He built a powerful military, destroyed the warring states, unified China, and developed its economy. He imposed uniform law, measurement, and the coin system, constructed roads, and established a county system. He was extremely dominating and violent. The Qin Mausoleum and the Terracotta Warrior Pits are examples of the wonderful construction projects undertaken during the Qin Empire. The Terracotta Warriors Pit was found out in March 1974. The farmers, while digging wells for water, incidentally found the Grand Pit. It is the largest military museum. In the first pit, archaeologists excavated a large number of soldiers, chariots, vehicle horses and weapons like swords, spears, arrows and crossbows. The warriors are life-size, reflecting a variety of expressions, garments and hairstyles. The leaders wear armor and the troops are dressed in short clothes without helmets. They represent the mighty army that unified China in ancient times. The Qin Empire spent the major portion of the country's labor and resources in the construction of the tomb and the statue army. At the fall of the Qin Empire, pit number three was yet incomplete and pit number four did not have the chance to put the terracotta statues in the site and therefore hastily dumped and the project remained unfinished. The terracotta warriors and mausoleum remind us of the Greek sculptures in the Egyptian pyramids. In 1987, UNESCO included it in the list of World Heritage Sites. Let's have a look at Xi'an's modern ideal village. Its name is Xi'a. There are 348 families in it. It has a population of 1,343 people. The village has a cultivable land of 720 Mao. Tourism has become an important side business of the farmers here. The average income of the farmers is 5,070 yuans. These houses have been constructed by the farmers out of their own earnings and savings. The farmers spend their leisure hours doing exercise and playing Chinese checkers. Uh, I'm Yang. I'm Yang Dongyi. Uh. 今年67岁了。Mr. Yang Tung Yi is an old farmer of this village. He has a son and three daughters. Together they manage a vinegar-making factory besides farming and poultry farming. He likes traveling. He mentioned that he would like to come to India. When we inquired about the motive as to whether his spiritual attachment towards the birthplace of Gautam Buddha Let us meet another farmer in Xi'an who discovered one of the wonders of the world, the terracotta warriors and horses spits. Our 
I was an ordinary peasant then. There was drought in 1974. The farmers started digging wells around here. In the southwest of our village, myself along with other three farmers were digging for water. During the digging process, we found the terracotta statue. We had no idea about it till that time. I thought it would be an image representing a deity. We further dug out the complete idol and managed to send it to the Department of Archaeology. Consequently, they came to the village and asked us to stop digging and soon started excavation of the site. Nanajo they found it to be the attachment of the mausoleum of China's first great emperor. Later on, it turned into the biggest archaeological monument in China. This finding benefited the villagers also. We are very happy that we found out this great historical relic. In China, there is a great discipline in the public transport system. Like our low floor green line buses in Delhi, there are long, beautiful buses everywhere. They are the lifelines of the common people. Buses are under government control. Tickets are very reasonable. There are no conductors nor will you find checking staff here and there. Cards are used. You will find the names of all the places on the route at the bus stop. China has a long history of kites. People have been flying kites for more than 2,300 years. Kite flying is a part of national culture. The Chinese have a variety of artistic kite designs and are highly skilled kite makers. The traditional kite handicraft has flourished all over China. The city of Xi'an is known for its keen interest in kite flying. There are more than 300 kinds of kites in China. They have human figures, fishes, birds, insects, animals, written characters and so on. Their sizes range from miniature to extra large. In the kite festival, you will find teams of men to fly bigger kites and commentators are arranged to describe the festival. Drum and bell towers are located in the ancient part of the city of Xi'an. In the old days, the drums were used to signal the running of time and also as an alarm in an emergency. There are 24 drums in the drum tower. They stand for 24 solar terms. There is a set of bronze bells. The visitors enjoy musical performances in the evening. China is regarded as a big manufacturing power. Shanghai is its biggest industrial and commercial city. It ranks at the forefront of China's provinces and regions in terms of annual industrial and agricultural output value, export earnings and cargo handling. The new generation of Shanghai under the influence of modern managerial practices seem to pay greater attention to efficiency, have shrewder economic eye and put a greater premium on the quality of life than the people of other areas in China and undoubtedly they are better educated also. 
the Lu Chia Chui Financial and Trade Zone in Pudong and the time-honored financial street of the old city facing each other across the Huang Pu River have an integrated perspective, making Shanghai the busiest business metropolis in China. The area is known for its stock exchange building, the world-famous Oriental Pearl Tower, 101-story Global Financial Tower, and the other high-rise buildings. The government has focused its attention on the upliftment of Pudong area, which is a large Singapore-sized piece of land. China's reforms and implementation of the open door policy have instilled new vitality into Shanghai. Pudong area here is a primary destination for foreign investments. A host of foreign businesses, including many multinational corporations, have invested in this area. And of course, the government has also created the enormous infrastructure for Pudong's development. The Waigao Chao power plant lights up Shanghai's lives. This thermal power station has four units, each fulfilling a major energy requirement of Shanghai. Shanghai city government is very concerned about the environment work, the environment work as a joint effort. 综合决策的一个重要的内容，那么也把气候变暖作为环境保护的一项重要内容之一。We have done a lot in the field of environment protection, but being a large commercial and industrial metropolis, Shanghai is still facing various challenges, which we are trying to sort out with determination. 二零零五年的基础上削减百分之十五。The Changjiang High Tech Park. Is home to many innovative projects with bioengineering firms having the most prominent place. It is an engine of high-tech industries in China. Yeah, Zhangjiang High Tech Park. We were founded in 1992. This is a state-owned high-tech park. Shanghai's Zhangjiang High Tech Park was established in 1992. Its main purpose is to promote high-tech development. 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 Many renowned international companies have established their research and development offices here. Shanghai's famous medical universities have also set up their campuses in it. Traditional Chinese medicine university, Fudong University, and many small and medium companies are also located here. This park is a cluster of different companies functioning in a congenial atmosphere. A new international airport has been set up in this area. The airport is linked with the main port of Pudong by the most advanced magnetic train Maglev, with a speed of 430 kilometers per hour. Maglev is a system of transportation that suspends, guides, and propels vehicles using magnetic forces. This method has the potential to be faster, quieter, and smoother than wheeled mass transit systems. Pudong's Waigao Chia bonded zone is doing brisk processing trade, trade in services, and intraport trade. The port here has increased its cargo and container handling capacity with the expansion of deep berths. Shanghai has opened shipping lines around the globe, extending to Europe, America, Australia, Japan, and South Asia. It is among the biggest cargo ports, container harbors, and is an international maritime shipping center. With a population of more than 13 million in an area of 6,340 square kilometers, the people of Shanghai have developed their city into China's economic center and number one port. The world expositions are galleries of human inspirations and thoughts. Their significance lies in holding events of economic, scientific, technological, and cultural exchange. Shanghai is the destination of the next World Expo. The city with full vitality is the essence of human civilization. The theme of the World Exposition in Shanghai is Better City, Better Life. Expo Shanghai would be the first World Exposition with a city theme. It will serve as a demonstration on the future of urbanization. 
The expo will be held from May 1st to October 31st, 2010. More than 200 countries, international organizations and NGOs with a close relationship to the theme of the expo are going to participate here. International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, Boao World Forum for Asia, World Wildlife Fund and International Water Association have also confirmed their participation. The Expo 2010 in Shanghai is a reflection of the international community's support for and confidence in China's reforms and implementation of the Open Door Policy. General objective of Shanghai Expo is to draw the participation of 70 million people from all over the world. Hopefully, you will be here and to join us, and we will provide the platform for cultural exchange and for people from different parts of the world to meet and talk together here in Shanghai. The prominent cities of the world will share and exchange experience of urban construction and development. The site of the expo is located at a waterfront area along both banks of the Huangpu River. It has a total area of 5.28 square kilometers. The master plan is based on the concept of City of Harmony. It is interesting to know that quite a large piece of land has been allocated to India's pavilion, also in this expo. And India is a big country and it has a long civilization and history. It's like China. India has already confirmed its uh, participation in Shanghai Expo and it will build its own pavilion in the Zone A area of the Expo site. The area of the pavilion will be around 4,000 square meters. It will be one of the biggest in the Asian countries. But we welcome you to, to Shanghai. To